an airplane is heading due north at an airspeed of 750 kilometers per hour, but there is a wind blowing from the northwest at 60 kilometers per hour. How many degrees off course will the plane fly, and what is the plane's speed relative to the ground? In this video, we'll show how to use trigonometry, more specifically the law of sines and law of cosines, to solve this problem. There's another video that solves this exact problem using the component form of vectors. To begin, because the airplane is heading due north at an airspeed of 750 kilometers per hour, we can represent this using this blue vector. So if we call this blue vector vector P, notice how it's pointing due north. And because the airspeed is 750 kilometers per hour, the magnitude of vector P is equal to 750. Next, the wind is blowing from the northwest at 60 kilometers per hour. So if the wind is blowing from the northwest, it's actually blowing in the direction of southeast, or this direction here. So to represent the wind, we can use this red vector here with the initial point at the origin. Notice how it's pointing in the direction of southeast, and because it's blowing 60 kilometers per hour, if we call this vector w, we can say the magnitude of vector w is equal to 60. Now to answer the two questions, we want to find the sum of these two vectors, or the resultant vector. To add vector p and w geometrically, we'd place the initial point of vector w at the terminal point of vector p, as we see here in red. So this red vector here is still vector w, so it has a magnitude of 60. The resultant vector would be this green vector here with the initial point at the initial point of vector p and the terminal point at the terminal point of vector w. So let's call this the resultant vector. Notice when we do this, we form a triangle, and the number of degrees the plane would be off course would be this angle here, which we'll call angle alpha in the triangle and the plane's speed relative to the ground would be the length of this green vector or the magnitude of vector r. So we want to find the magnitude of vector r and the measure of angle alpha. But before we do this, there's one more key piece of information. Analyzing the triangle, because vector w is blowing in the direction of southeast, it forms a 45 degree angle with this vertical axis or vector p. So this angle here measures 45 degrees. This is important because now we can determine the magnitude of vector r using the law of cosines. And we should recognize this because notice how we know this angle here and we also know the length of the two sides that form this known angle. So applying the law of cosines, remember, side a would be opposite angle a and sides b and c form a, the known angle. So applying the law of cosines, we'll first find the magnitude of vector r, which would give us the plane's speed relative to the ground. So the magnitude of vector r squared is equal to 60 squared plus 750 squared minus 2 times 60 times 750 times cosine of 45 degrees. And now we'll go to the calculator. We first want to verify that we are in degree mode. So press the mode key. Notice how we are in degree mode. Go back to the home screen and we'll enter 60 squared plus 750 squared minus two times 60 times 750 times cosine 45 degrees. Enter. So this gives us the magnitude of vector r squared. So we have the magnitude of vector r squared equals 502,460.3897. seven. We know the magnitude is positive, so we'll take the principal square root of both sides of the equation, 
to determine the magnitude of vector r, which again gives us the speed of the plane relative to the ground. And remember, taking the square root of a number is the same thing as raising it to the one-half power. So going back to the calculator, if I just press the exponent key here, or the caret, it's going to raise the previous answer to whatever exponent I enter. So I'll just enter an exponent of one-half, enter. Notice how this is equivalent to taking the square root of 502,460.3897. So the magnitude is approximately 708.8444 which means the plane's speed relative to the ground is approximately 708.8444 kilometers per hour. And notice how this is slower than the speed of the plane in still air because notice how the wind is slowing the plane down. This is actually the second question. Now we'll answer the first question how many degrees off course the plane would fly. Let's go ahead and label this as 708.8444. Now to find angle alpha, because now we have a known angle, the length of the opposite side, we can use the law of sines to determine alpha. Applying the law of sines, the sine of angle alpha divided by the length of the opposite side, or sine alpha, divided by 60 must equal the sine of 45 degrees divided by the length of the opposite side, which we now know is 708.8444. So now we'll cross multiply, solve for sine alpha, then determine alpha. Let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. So sine alpha times 708.8444 must equal 60 times sine 45. So again, 708.8444 sine alpha must equal 60 times sine 45 degrees. Divide both sides by 708.84444. Simplifying, we get sine alpha equals this quotient here. So to solve this for alpha, we would take the inverse sine or arc sine of both sides of the equation, which would give us alpha equals inverse sine or arc sine, again, of this quotient. And now we'll go back to the calculator one more time. We'll press second sine, and then we have 60 sine 45 degrees divided by 708.8 four, four, four. So alpha is approximately 3.4314 degrees. Which is this angle here in our triangle, which is how many degrees the plane would be off course, or we could say the plane would end up 3.4314 degrees east of due north. So the plane will be 3.4314 degrees off course, or again we could say it would be 3.4314 degrees east of due north. I hope you found this helpful.